after Germany's 2014 World Cup triumph in Brazil. The national team has been going through one of the darkest times the country has seen in football. However, I'm pleased to say that the new era of German football is among us. As the 2024 Euros come rapidly approaching, Germany sinks lower and lower into the list of favorites to win. Germany probably being in the worst mood regarding the national team. And of course the Aus, uh, Germany, who keep on surprising everybody for the past six months. But the Germans have already won the tournament before it's even begun. How could that be? Well, in this video, I'll show you exactly why. The political landscape of Germany has been in shambles for a long time, and it's important that we acknowledge the role politics play in football. Politics is the reason the last World Cup was hosted in Qatar. Politics play a role in choosing players for national teams. Politics generally oversee what happens in the world of football. Now what does that have to do with Germany and the Euros? Well, every time the German national team has ever performed well and won a huge international tournament, political tensions and sometimes crises arise. We saw this in the 1970s when Germany had a surprise victory in the 1972 Euros, their first European title, and two years later when they won their second World Cup when it was hosted in 1974. The German football team was on fire and the best in the world by a long shot. However, politics in the country were not so good. At the time, West Germany's Chancellor Willy Brandt was imminent in improving relations with East Germany and other Eastern Bloc countries. This contributed to a period of easing hostile relations and reduced political tensions between East and West Germany, but it also faced criticism and opposition from conservative forces within West Germany and was followed by a series of terrorist attacks by left-wing group Red Army Faction, who were targeting government officials. This phenomenon repeated itself in 1990 when Germany won their second World Cup in Italy, right around the same time as the fall of the Berlin Wall and the reunification of West and East Germany, which was a good thing at the surface, but it brought lots of social integration issues, political differences, and economic disparities. The most recent example happened about 10 years ago, when Germany had a fantastic World Cup campaign in Brazil, a momentous victory for the Germans. However, a year later, a huge crisis would follow, for the people of Germany took in millions of migrants and refugees due to the situation that was happening in Syria in 2015, and the country's infrastructure was hurting due to how many people they were taking in, which caused such a huge political divide between the citizens. Now what does that have to do with the modern day? Well currently in Europe, they have just proposed a new diesel tax on fuel, which has a huge effect across all the farmers in the EU. This new tax will make it almost impossible for farmers to keep their businesses running and would completely destroy small and medium farms across the continent. Protests have gotten particularly bad in France and Germany with millions of farmers parking their tractors on the roads and destroying capital buildings. Germany will obviously host the 2024 Euros, and with tensions getting so high, it is very possible we will see a huge turning point in German politics within at least the next two years. Which, if the pattern continues, means Germany will succeed immensely in the upcoming Euros tournament. Obviously, it has to come down to how good their football team is, and the squad this year is one of the best in history. To start, Germany have one of the most underrated managers in the world, Julian Nagelsmann. He was great at Bayern before he was sacked undeservingly, and his vision for football is like nobody else, possibly one of the best managers in the tournament. And this is the team he would most likely start. In goal, it's likely Ter Stegen, but it also could be Neuer. The back line will consist of Rudiger from Real Madrid and Jonathan Toff from Bayer Leverkusen, who have both had great seasons. The fullbacks could be Sklaterbeck, maybe David Rahm and Hendrik, but the midfield has the most depth in the world. There's Gunduan, Kimmich, Pascal Gross, Wurz, Pavlovich, Müller, Musiela, and lastly Tonis Kroos, but to pick three, I'd go with Wurz, Kroos, and Kimmich. Up front, there is Sané, maybe Musiela on the wings, and full Krug up top. There's so much talent in this team, but who would be the catalyst, the game changer, the star boy of the Germany team? For me, it's Florian Wurz. Coming off a great season with Bayer Leverkusen, he's ready to excite in the Euros. It's his first major international showing, and his goal against France sums up the talent he possesses. Germany will need his creativity and flair on the pitch this summer, and the timing couldn't be more perfect for Wurz to make a big impact. Overall, Germany has the best balance of experienced players like Kimmich, Müller, Kroos, Rudiger, and Tistegen, as well as young talent. It's not ridiculous to argue that Germany has the best squad in all of the Euros which is only one of the tactical advantages. In my opinion, Julian Nagelsmann has the best tactical setup in football. His tactical approach is a masterclass in flexibility and innovation, marked by its dynamic nature and adaptability. Rather than adhering rigidly to a single formation, Nagelsmann's teams fluidly switches between variations of a 4-2-3-1 and a 3-4-3, tailoring their setup to exploit the weaknesses of whoever they are playing against. At the core of his tactics is a relentless pressing game, aimed at swiftly winning back possession and launching rapid counterattacks. However, his teams are equally comfortable in a patient build-up play, often initiated from the back with players interchanging positions to confound the opposing team. His fluid movement creates spaces and opportunities, complemented by quick vertical passing to exploit the gaps in defense. Furthermore, Nagelsmann's meticulous attention to detail is evident in his set-piece mastery, both offensively and defensively. And given he has some of the most talented players in the whole world on his team, 
He has crafted a deadly side to play against. As far as the group stage will go, it should be fairly simple for Germany. Germany were clearly the favorites to top group A, but this group is a bit more tricky than it looks. Scotland were pretty quality in their qualifiers causing some major upsets like beating Spain 2-0, Norway 2-1, but recently they have lost a few of their friendlies which tells me that their Euro campaign might not kick off how they want, considering the morale and momentum of the team right now. And they also played Germany on the opening day of the tournament, which is absolutely brutal. But they will have 100,000 fans traveling to Germany, and that will create a crazy atmosphere. So it is possible they make it to the knockouts. Hungary is always good for a surprise upset and their team this year is looking super strong. They beat Turkey a little while ago and beat Germany in the Nations League, so it's difficult to say where they'll land. They were also undefeated for 14 games until they lost to Ireland on June 4th, so I don't know. Switzerland is another one of those difficult teams to predict because some years they are phenomenal and make a huge push in the group stage and others not so much. The Swiss look promising in their past friendlies and in qualification, but to be honest, they have been playing much weaker teams compared to Germany. And considering they're on home soil, have the best squad in Group A, it should be easy for Nagelsmann to beat Switzerland. Just because I don't think they would lose to a team of this caliber. So if I were to predict the outcome of Group A, it would be Germany first, Scotland second, Hungary third, and Switzerland last. It's too complicated to say who Germany might face after the group stage, but if we look at the other favorites, we might be able to get a good idea of where they'll land. England are being held as the favorites to win, the bookies are saying 3-1 to one odds, which is a lot. But historically speaking, England have been favorites to win numerous times, like in Euro 2004. England had a strong team with players like David Beckham, Michael Owen, and Wayne Rooney. And instead of winning, they were knocked out in the quarterfinals by Portugal on pens. The World Cup 2018, same thing. Great team, lots of talent, but lost to Croatia in the semifinals. Most recently in Euro 2020, England were again favorites and did actually make it to the final, but lost to Italy on pens. So looking at the past, they're choke masters. And lots of fans are saying they have changed and it will be different this year. But I would bet you that Germany could take on England. France, on the other hand, are tipped for a long run this year with Mbappe leading Le Bleu. They are second to England in odds and I still don't see this France team winning. I'd say they're weaker than they were at the last Euros, where they were knocked out by Switzerland early on in the tournament and their group might cause them some problems. Although they came very close to winning the 2022 World Cup, I think France will suffer from success and they don't really pose a huge threat to Germany in this tournament. We've seen throughout the season that Rudiger and Ta were able to shut down some of the best attackers in the world, but you still can't overlook them because anything's possible in football, even if you suck in the Euros. The last team that I would say would cause some problems later on for Germany would be Spain or even Portugal. Portugal squad has the experienced players and the electric talent up front. And with Cristiano Ronaldo in the team, it seems like the perfect time for Ronaldo to have his last dance in the Portugal national team and win his second Euros title. As far as Spain goes, they have a great team. There's no doubting that. However, I am a bit skeptical of how they will look under their new manager, Luis de la Fuente. He was the manager of the under-23 national team since 2021 and was decently successful, talking about two points per game. However, I don't foresee him being ultra-successful on the biggest stage in the world, considering his background. Overall, Spain looked to be strong and could be a big team to play later on, but I still think it's unlikely that Germany will lose, in my opinion. Let me know in the comments where you see Germany finishing this summer. Also, follow the new Instagram and TikTok linked in the description. It would really help me out, and as always, I'll see you guys next week.